was the this was one of the first TV films that was that was shot and taken out like this to film festivals and out to the world. It was uh, reviewed as one of the best looking TV films yet because at that point everything that was TV just sort of looked like I don't know that they, they had shot in their basement and uh, you know. This was, I mean, a cast of a hundred women. <laughs> every hundred women, we women. Every woman we knew was like, you know, you're gonna have to come. We're gonna need you for a scene. Oh, you know, oh, oh, oh. Um, and uh, and locations. I mean, what I believed as a as a producer at this point was that it was cheaper to move around than it was to stay in one place. I was like, you know, if we're only asking them for one day or half a day or whatever it might be, that is so much less expensive than can we come shoot your house for three weeks or whatever it might have been, right? So uh, do you remember how many shooting days it was, Todd? Like in the end? Jesus, what was it, 11? No, it was more than one. It was three weeks. weeks. Yeah, it was three Five weeks. days, so it was 15 days. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. That's it. Yeah, or maybe it was 18 days because maybe, you know, who took, who took a day off? What, take, what P. David said earlier before the film about sending us out with this page number and never thinking we were going to shoot those. Like, you're going to shoot this many pages today. <laughs> and we would do it. But I have to say to these actors, I mean, everyone knew their lines. I knew these theater people, right, are very cracker jacket that, but Mary and Jamie and Sandy, they were memorizing so much. And that scene with the, uh, in the town hall was one day. But that day we had two cameras, that was revolutionary. So we were shooting two setups on every shot. And they matched perfectly. Why don't we go down the line and everyone just say their name and what they did in the film? I'm Jamie Talbert on the film. I've added Franklin, Jamie Talbert Franklin, and I play Mary's sister. <laughs> the evil sister. I'm so evil in this film. <laughs> It's so much fun. I think it's just on. I think it's on. You're good. Just hop in it. See what happens. It was on. I think it's on. Just hop in the top of it and see what happens. Oh, there she is. Oh, let's see. She's ready. Oh, she's ready. So, what am I supposed to say? What's your name? What's your name? <laughs> Who's your Mary? <laughs> Mary, Mary. I think that's what they call her in the movie. I don't know. No, you're Lisa Lestrade. Lisa Lestrade. Oh, I am. Oh, I didn't know that. You should have told me. Right, because the script was written after. Lisa Lestrade, the Euripides play about women taking over. So it was an update, or was that. And also the film The Women by George Cukor is one of my favorites. And one thing I'm very lucky with is I know so many amazing actresses. Yeah. And we've all fooled around many times. Brian was uh, one of my rare male leads, because usually I just make films with women, mostly. Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> but don't try to be a boy lesbian filmmaker, because they don't go for it. <laughs> I'm Pete A. Neversold. I am a. Uh, I'm listed as co-producer on the movie, but the truth is, is that I was the, the behind the scenes puppet master. Uh, and Todd and I wrote together. Todd really wrote the first draft of the film and was one of the earlier collaborations where we started to, to blend, mm -hmm. right? And I can't remember anything about like who did what or who wrote what or who added what to what. I mean, when I watch it now, it's to me so seamless between the two of us. And I think it was one of the first times we really started to do that. Well, I think we've done it before, but it's the first time it was made. It was made, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you mean you've done it before? Well, we had written together before, had oh, jobs, yeah, yeah. right? Like we had had jobs. Yeah. But you know, Hollywood, nothing gets made. They also done it. Oh, oops. Together. <laughs> <laughs> this is the year 2000, when we, well, no, 1999. 
9999 is when the film went out for its first day, first day of, shooting. of uh, shooting. And David had just wrapped a uh, feature he directed in August called Straight Right Woo! that Mary was in. Were you guys in there? Did I make everybody else be in there? Her <laughs> husband was in it. All right. But we had all, Matt North was in it again with right. Andy Daly playing Counts. Yeah. But we had, you know, we knew the LA theater scene, so we knew all these actors. And then also, you know, just going to the dog parks, you meet like cult superstars. So. <laughs> <laughs> Why, who might you be? Yeah, right. Young lady. There was a stalking situation. Uh, well, was, yeah, there was stalking involved. Yeah, yeah, we did stalk. I'm David Schwartz. I was 29 years old in that movie. Thank you very much. She was beautiful. Oh my god, you look so gorgeous in it. The lighting is so beautiful. Yeah, it was very nice. Well, she's down there. Oh, yeah? Is somebody holding her leash? She's just watching. Good, good, yeah. Thank you. Gloria, thank you, I'm Gloria. Brian Newkirk. I was Conan. My eyes were the ones that opened. Let me do that. Well done. Here. Yeah, you. Oh my gosh. Lisa Beasley. Um, blink and you miss me. I'm in Gaia's camp. But what you don't know is Guy's camp was in their backyard. <laughs> and it was a tent, and we were all inside a tent in their backyard. Um, yeah, and, and we had we just bought that house. We were just doing that house. Yes. And as soon as we started shooting, this helicopter kept circling and circling. So they kept going, cut, cut, wait. And we. We finally got the scene, and then the Elysium, well, the scene out in the nature was really in the nature. And uh, that was hilarious because we got attacked by bees. Oh. Bees Do you remember that? Yeah. Something happened, and all of a sudden, everybody was like running, and stuff was happening. And, and all I know is, we finished everything and everything was lovely. It was so fun and we were having such a blast and then we were you know, getting out of our costumes and heading home. And I realized halfway on the way home that I still had on my new women necklace. And I said, oh my God, I, I stole this. I should have given it back to the costume people. And then I wore it tonight and I thought I was gonna get in trouble but they said it's fine. <laughs> oh, I'm thrilled to see it. So that symbol is designed by a woman named Sheila de Bretfield, who is, oh, hello, uh, Sheila de Bretfield, who is my mother's best friend, and she is the head of the design department at Yale, the first tenured female professor ever at Yale. Wow. And she designed that in, in the 70s, and I remembered it from being a kid when we were writing this movie. I asked her, can we use it as the symbol for the, for the film, the, uh, the bolt? Uh, you know, for the for the female symbol, and she gave us, you know, written signed permission. <laughs> and the statute of limitations has run out, so I'm keeping so Lisa's it. Lisa's not going to jail tonight. And if you want to see it, I'm somewhere. <laughs> we were saying Christy did a great job with the costume. The costumes are so great. Christy Whittenborn, who did the costumes, right? Like there's oh, women of a certain. Women of a very specific era. Yes, right? Yeah. <laughs> And and I say our, our makeup guy did such an amazing job because I thought everyone just looked gorgeous. And um, and then we did that weird thing in Elysium where everyone was silver. Right, silver. But um, well, how old were you when when this film was made? Oh wow, I think it was. Are you are 30, you thirty? You're thirty eight or thirty eight, something, something like that, right? right? And Mary is. 58 in that movie, right? Which is oh, our, right. Which is our age now. Right. And then we had to put old age makeup on her at the end. I remember like thinking at the time, like, oh, we're going to like draw lines on her lips and make it so that she that was the one old thing. because it's 15 years later. The one thing that uh, could have been <laughs> improved upon that old age makeup. <laughs> 
Well, I want to talk about the zombie makeup just real quick. Oh, yeah. So I was in this game with the, the, the when the women got so hungry because they couldn't feed themselves, but they turned into zombies. Um, and so that first day, Vache, our fabulous makeup artist, um, he was doing my makeup first, and, and I would go out and look at at, uh, at these guys, and they would say, hungrier, we need her to be hungry. So I'd go back to the mirror, and literally like four times, they were like, Bache, hungrier. <laughs> Make them look starving, so then that's how we ended up at Zombies. Well, the first time Mary came out of the makeup trailer, it was like, ah, she looked like a drag queen. She's just really dumbing her up. And we were like, oh, Vache, no, no, no. You got this all wrong. Because she's not even a girl. girl. No, they didn't have Google then. But I think he thought it was going to be much, I don't know, it was a little. Uh, yeah. But he got it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Do you remember, Mary, what Nanny that you've seen the film? Yeah. Do you remember anything like that day at the park where all the girls were getting stuck by the beach? <laughs> you were in the trailer with Jenny Shimizu and her girlfriend who got, you told me some hilarious story about what was going on in there. I don't remember. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't remember most of that movie. <laughs> I was a little sketchy too on some stuff. I was like, we at Claremont College, right? That was filmed at Claremont, Claremont College. College. Yeah. Okay. I was teaching at the Claremont Colleges, and I had the keys. And so it was one of those. So it was one of those kind of situations where it's like I was, I was a professor, and that was my office that had the two-way mirror. The creepy two-way two mirror. Right? Oh right. I, I like that was where I used to see students and sit. And That's like, crazy. I suppose somebody maybe watched me from the outside, but I'm not really sure. But uh, no, I think it, had, it had been some kind of like a psychology Whoa. story. It had been a psychology school before it had become a film school. But I had the keys, so I was like, well, we'll just go on a weekend. I don't even think I asked permission, honestly. I think I mean, Alex Uhas booked it for like a class. She maybe something. said it was okay. She <laughs> said the students were doing something. Right. But no one ever bothered us, so we did some crazy stuff. What was the church where we did that town? That was the Silver Lake Church right on next to 7-Eleven. And Roma, Roma lost her mind during that scene. Like she, I don't know what she was happening. She like a whole new she weird was, character, was like, right? She, I did a shop down at the... Right, she got a new accent. <laughs> she did, she yeah. got a new she accent. Yeah. <laughs> but she was sitting behind me the whole time and she wouldn't stop talking. <laughs> Because that was not the reaction shot. She was on the profile. She was on the show called Profiler at the time. And we were actually off of set. Jamie was teaching school right. and had to take time off. Mary was very generous and had a break in her schedule. Everyone was the working and stuff, and we had to try to figure it out. Roma was on TV, and she was the only one who just get like, you know, we'd have to change the I would literally have to go and pick her up from the set and say, I'm yeah. driving you to the, to the next set. And we would we would get there and say, she had been working a 12 hour day. And you go, oh. well, you're working all night. And, like, <laughs> you know, like, and Mary Shear, who played the mayor, was gonna play the part of Jane Ray. And she Claire. had just gotten on the Martin Short show or something like that. And said, I can't do a leave. I can't take that three weeks off right now, so. Yeah. But how lucky we got everyone that we did for us. And Jane then, was so funny. She was so, she was so funny. awesome. Yeah. And Sandy she was, Kinder. Sandy. Sandy. Jane sings the new women's song, even though somebody else is lip syncing it at right. the at the camp. But I mean, what's a Todd Hughes film without a song? I had to have a musical number. <laughs> <laughs> and Todd's like music. I feel like we all sang that. Did we all? Like, I, cause I feel like we all recorded ourselves singing yeah. that yeah. Yeah. at one point. Is that all of us? Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. No, they did, I, we did a great job with the sound, I thought, in the ADR and the um, loop group, which was just like the same people. <laughs> yeah, the loop group was us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird. I don't remember like Mary doing ADR, but clearly you did it. And yes. We all went in. You guys called us in later. Yeah. For so some, got that studio donated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For some re 
But all of the post-production and post-sound was done in Arlington, Virginia. Yeah. Why? Wow. Right? Well, because the Roland House, this company that I met at Sundance, I went to one of those panels, you know, when you go to a panel at a big film festival, and somebody gets up and says, you know, and we're very supportive of independent film. If there's any project that you have, and I was like, hi, we have a movie, and we have to figure out how to finish it. And I went after those people, and that woman, Mary Beth, mm -hmm. Mary Beth, she became like my ally at the company, and she helped push it through. And they were doing National Geographic uh, videos, and they wanted to get into independent film. And so they put all their resources, their entire company, um, on what was it like six floors? Everyone was working for us. It was amazing. amazing. And they put the whole thing. And they had the poster up in there for oh, years. Yeah, and they, they were they, very proud of it. Wow. You know, and I and, and I they just, loved it. That was I, a good poster. Was like valuing everything. So I gave a value to all the different things that they did for us, and wrote it as a budget, and said that like you know when the movie sells, we'll pay you back. <laughs> like I think we spent twenty five hundred dollars or something. Along and I think you all got a very, very, very tiny check from it was a SAG production, right? Yay! It was a SAG production. Yeah. We got one bit of money, yeah. and it was so sad. <laughs> it was sad, but like to get paid in those days for doing something like this, it was so much fun and just an absolute. Well, delight. so David directed yeah. what your Brendan is in, her husband, and John Palmer, right? They get, not John Palmer. American. American. They get checks because they sold it to all these European <laughs> TV stations, and so they're still. Yeah, every once in a while, there's like, oh, look, it's straight right. From Romania. And this is so funny, so I remember when we were filming the barbecue scene, <laughs> and John American and Gil Gale brought this Mark Burnham, Burnham. who was in SAG and like, Oh, they can't use my name because they'll bust me and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And we're like, you just did the barbecue scene, but we get it. You know, we dig it. So we couldn't put his name in the credits. And he is starring right now <laughs> in the Texas Chainsaw He's Massacre. New, new letter letters. New letter letters. Letter 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 yeah. <laughs> so if anybody watches the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre, <laughs> Leatherface. Leather we could have destroyed his career. Yeah. And by there. being in the barbecue sequence. He was in the barbecue. And he's an awesome guy. He yeah. is. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions for the. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to know where you found the place with all the pipes. Ah. Yeah, that's what I wanted. The reclamation center. <laughs> that was called Tillman Water Reclamation Center. And in, in, where was it? That was a real, you got the clearance for that. We got actually we real that location place. Yeah. clearance for that, but it's where all the poop was. Ooh. It's poopy. It smelled it was, really it bad. It smelled bad. <laughs> it smelled <laughs> like poop. And it was a long way to go down to those pipes. And I remember poor Marion, um, we had a cot for you somewhere. In one of the hallways. Me? Yeah. Uh -oh. And at the end, it's all cut around because they're going from that place to the Claremont Colleges, right? You go through doors and. Right, and then it, go, and then it goes into like my office underneath the, yeah, in, at the Claremont Colleges. But I thought we pulled it out fairly well. <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. But, that we, but that, 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 that maybe uh, suburban house is where we got chased at, that scene where the girls are chasing, and she's like, there's yeah. no in the house. Fully got chased out. <laughs> right, but we were like, keep filming until and the like, cops keep show going, up. Keep going, keep going. <laughs> that doctor he would do that. That's great. <laughs> hmm. So funny. Yes. Anybody else any other questions out there? This film was made with stolen locations. Stolen. That's uh, exciting. Back in the day when you could steal locations. Yeah. You just go in, you do it, you get out. But now, you just try that. Yeah. Mm -mm. So where, when, when you were driving the van, it looked through the desert. Where was that? That desert stuff is in all Lancaster. Lancaster. Oh, okay. That house was in Lancaster, her house out in the desert. 
And you could see they were just building, starting to build those track homes, right? But they were out in the middle of nowhere. It's, it kind of looks Palm Springs or Desert Hot Springs. Yeah, it's not that far. Yeah, it feels like that. Mm -hmm. That's where the bees were. Right. <laughs> well, that was, that was um, it's up the freeway. It's where they filmed uh, Beverly Hills 90210 AM studio. Yeah, it's out, it's out above Los Angeles. What they call it? I don't know, 40 miles up above, yeah. LA, or 30 miles, mm -hmm. right? It's within the studio zone. So but that park so. had no restrictions. Ah. Whoever did the brilliant research. <laughs> so that park, we had a permit, and there were no, and it was free. Oh, that's right. And there were no restrictions. So that's right. what we were doing was perfectly fine. I don't think anyone would have imagined we would have created a bonfire and had like playback. It was like a Bollywood movie, right? Had the speakers blaring, the girls dancing. <laughs> oh, and that shot, there's a shot of Mary, Jamie, and Sandy, right? And the sun was going down. Do you that remember that? my this? favorite shot. And Larry's like, if it goes behind that hill, we lose it. And then we have to go out. I'm like, okay, kids, go. And they nailed it, and it's gorgeous. But they, they did everything you asked them to do. Mm -hmm. But that was another one take Warrenov, right? It was like <laughs> everyone was so on, mm -hmm. right? I remember you said, I'm going to have this baby once. I'm going to have this baby once. <laughs> so we had actually had a reverse shot of Mary riding the guy. What? Right, yeah. in the scene where she has sex with her husband. Uh -huh. But I remember her doing that, and she was like, cut, that's it. <laughs> that's <laughs> enough of that. That's enough of that. That's right. <laughs> the only person we didn't know in this movie was Michael White. He was great. And he still played your husband. husband. Yeah, he was just cast from pictures. Right, yeah. he said just in a photo. A casting director. Yeah. 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 yeah, because we wanted Charlie Rocket to play. Because Charlie Rock did. Yeah, Charlie Rock did. Anyone remember him from Saturday Night Live? Yeah, and Charlie got was the whole play. Thing and he wasn't able to do it. And so we had, yeah. Michael came in at the yeah. end. And we were worried that everyone's ages were kind of. Mm -hmm. But it totally worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't think about it at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I believed y'all. And Roma Mafia. Mm -hmm. Hilarious. She's so funny. So funny. Do you guys remember then we all did a bowling benefit? Were you guys at that? Yes! <laughs> yes. I yeah, remember the bowling benefit. Was it fundraising? Did we do it for fundraising? I no, think no. so, but Roman came and there was like TV coverage and stuff. And there gave an interview where she's like, look, we bowled together. That's how much fun we had. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Yes. And uh, you know, we're gonna we'll go upstairs and hang out for a bit. If anybody would like Mary to sign a book, uh, you know the books are available. The Wait for the Angels is uh, extremely rare, and I'm pretty, they're all from you know they're Mary's apartment yeah. at this point. Uh, we, we've been special printing also of uh, swimming underground uh, just for the event uh, here for these four weeks. So next next week is what we Warhol call night. Warhol night. And we're showing the, um, it's called Queen of China, but it's really, it's the, it's Chelsea Girls, but it's only the scenes that Mary is in, the two reels. Usually and Chelsea and Girls is, is four hours long and it's two screens. And even the Warhol Museum was like, and that's, that's you know, that takes some. Uh, but we're gonna be able to watch Mary to watch. Mary's yeah. Step, which was a play by Ronald Cavell. Oh, yeah. And apparently you nailed it. Yeah, yeah. You came in and delivered this monologue that lasts like 30 minutes. Uh-oh. Right, so it's two reels, 60 minutes. And the second half, there's no script, and things get a little cutesy. Okay, <laughs> can I just say this? Okay, so I was cast as Mary's sister. Yes. I saw Chelsea Girls when I was 18 <laughs> at the University of Texas in yeah. Austin. Yeah. Um, Dean yes. brought his own personal copies and showed us the Chelsea Girls. Wow. Wow. As, as well as some of the other um, reels 
that Warhol had done with on D. How did he get them? He had his own personal copies. Like, I'm thinking maybe he got paid with a copy of the film. So he took these films on the road in 1981. So they're at least 15 years old, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. So he showed these films, and I saw, at 18 years old, fresh from Fort Worth, Texas, I saw Mary Warrenoff playing Hanoi Hannah. And I felt seen. I felt seen. I felt like you knew me. Uh, I know, crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. But I identified with her. So forever, since I was 18 years old, he's been a hero of mine. Uh -oh. And then when Todd- She's responsible. No, she's not. And I never told her this because I thought she's gonna think I'm some simp, some, some fan, right? So I never told you that you had been my idol long before I got to be in the movie with you. That's happened to a couple of people. Well, I was still alive. I know, I know. So um, I got to be in a film with Hannah Hannah, who had been my hero. What? That's bad. I know, I know. How crazy is that? I you know, was she's in like college. a dominatrix. If you haven't seen it, She's, well, you're going to see it next week. Yeah. No, no. I went to college in 1981, and that book, Edie, had just come out. Right. And we were all fascinated by the Warhol underground. <laughs> and then I saw Edie Merle, and I thought it was the funniest movie I'd ever seen. And I just thought she was amazing. And I was like, wait a minute. And I went back to those books, and I was like, fuck, she was in the Velvet Underground. <laughs> wow. And became kind of obsessed. And then we moved to Hollywood and we had a dog named Killer. And we used to go to the Bronx and Dark Park every day. And so did a few people, one of them being Mary fucking Warren. Mary fucking Warren. Mary fucking, fucking Warren. Best friend. Daisy's mom. She was just Daisy's mom. Oh. But we played it cool for an entire year, I believe. Oh, stop. We played it I remember talking about, like, Oh, did you see what I've got to do with it? Oh, man, those costumes, blah, blah, blah. Right to blah, blah, blah. And then we saw Chelsea Girls at the design center. And the next day, we're like, oh, we have to confess. Oh, my God. And she's like, oh, wow. And I was like, like that then? She's like, I don't remember. I was so high. But I'm writing a book about it. And I'm like, oh, I love her. And then she stumbled into a theater at Outfest and saw David's film Death in Venice on the big screen yeah. and said, oh, you guys are filmmakers. I have this script called Vampire Cult Queens from Hell that I wrote for me and my friends, Barbara Steele and Martine Beswick. Oh, shit. And we did the autograph circuit together, right? We go to those conventions where all these crazy people come and pay for an autograph. But this film was about them as Mary, Martine, and Barbara, but they're also vampires. <laughs> and we put that together for a couple of years, yeah. And we put together a stage reading at her house with, it was everyone from our world, who was it? It was Martine Beswick, Barbara, Barbara. Steele, Mary Warna, Paul Bartell. He's fine. Um, yeah. Gosh, Matthew St. Patrick. Patrick Matthews, who was Amy Hill's personal trainer, who became a gay cop on Six Feet Under. Oh, no. um, who else was from the... Sandy was there. For Sandy the Kinder, Sandy of course. Kinder, was um, but yeah. wait, there were some boys there, like John Amerkin or... Oh, uh, Gil Gale. Gil Gale was there. Gil Gale. Gil Gale. Gil Gale. Gil Gale. Oh, and um, Taylor Deckron, I think. Taylor! Taylor. Taylor. Yeah. Yeah. David Del Valle is coming next week, and he was there, so he'll hopefully remember. And he was Mary's manager back in that circuit, and handled these cult queens, right? So he was a character in the movie. So next week, next week is Warhol week, and then the final week will be Rock and Roll High School, uh, where Mary 
plays uh, the, the E, Miss Tovar. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, well okay. Admin. And I thank you guys so much for coming, Dana, yes. Brian, Lisa, and Jamie. Thank you for having us, and thank you for making this fun movie. So we're gonna go upstairs, hang up for a little bit, uh, do a little autographing if, if anybody wants a, a book, and uh, then we'll see you upstairs. Is this yeah. the only time the movie includes show? But when it has not been shown, I don't think, for 20 years. Well, it had a theatrical release in Canada. Yeah. But it also, but it also was, well, it played film festivals it all over the U.S. Oh, it did? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and then it was released on DVD, yeah, yeah, back in the day, yeah. And VHS, it was on VHS. I currently own it on VHS. <laughs> yeah. oh. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Oh, thank you, John. Thank you, Todd and David.